first, we're heading to India, which is one of the fa world's fastest growing economies. As a matter of fact, it is now the fifth largest economy on nominal GDP terms. It is a country that is expected to have an urban population of more than 600 million by 2030, has already recorded 624 million internet users in 2021, it's fast improving its position on ease of doing business and is certainly a land of opportunity for global investors. While India continues on its growth journey, the government of India has recently introduced a series of initiatives to develop its own international financial centre at Gift City in Gujarat. We're delighted now to speak to Dipesh Shah, Head of Business Development and International Relations at the International Financial Services Centre Authority. And K.V. Prakash Subramanian, Managing Director and Head of Strategy, Process, Governance and Subsidiaries at Standard Chartered Bank India. Welcome to Cybos TV. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, Depesh, let's start with you. In the last two decades, we've seen the emergence of different financial centres. In your view, what role does the, do these relatively new financial centres play in the global industry? Yeah, certainly, I think in the last two decades, we have seen the each and every country taking a lot of steps in setting up the international financial services centers in their own territory. And what we have seen that the centers not only saw the local economy, but also connect very well with the global economy. And that's the agenda, I think, which each and every country is pursuing today. I'm glad to see that the new financial centers are able to connect through technology uh, to most of the global and local investors and offer them products which are at a very, very competitive cost uh, and at a, uh, um, uh, areas which were not been earlier been offered to them in their local markets. And this is what has been really changing and helping the, uh, the way the, it is serving the financial community in the global market. But lastly, I must say that um, there are centers These are becoming very important for global platforms for financial innovations. And the rise of the fintech is fundamentally altering the traditional financial services industry. So I clearly see fintech emerging as a very important area for the global financial industry. Very good point. And Depesh, we're going to stay with yourself uh, for a little while. Various financial centres together are in a way driving the development agenda in the world. What's your view and how does this theme gel with India's vision for GIFT IFSC? I think as I just said that each and every country developed their financial centre at a time that they thought that it was most appropriate to connect to the global economy. And uh, I don't think India is uh, way behind any of those countries now with setting up its own international financial center. It has clearly helped the, uh, the global and the local business to connect on a global platform. I believe the IFFC steps which has been taken by the government of India in the International Financial Services Center helps to become a very important platform in the global financial um, economy. And what we are seeing clearly uh, from a perspective of seeing the International Financial Services Center in India is to present an opportunity in all the financial segments, whether it is banking, insurance, cap capital market, uh, various other segments, to connect these financial centers with the global players. I think most of the important factor that we see, and, and um, you just said in your opening comments that India is far emerging as the fifth largest economy, and it's very naturally for it to connect with the global market, with the way the global institutional investors want it to. Secondly, I think from an India uh, to meet its own goals in the SDG, SDG and the Paris Climate Agreement, we would require a huge amount of foreign capital. And this would not be possible if we don't have our own international financial services center been operating on the same principle as to how the global financial institutions operate. Mm. And Depesh, growth of financial centers, amongst other factors, is, is determined by how the industry perceives the regulatory regime. In your opinion, what are the key factors in the regulatory regime that are top of the mind for the financial industry and which of them drive the IFSEA leadership? I think there are always three very key factors for any financial centre to be successful. One is the infrastructure that it provides to the global uh, uh, players to come in, two, the uh, uh, business regulations on which it operates, and three, the dispute resolution that it offers for the fast uh, um, uh, settling 
of the issues which are emerging in the financial center. So from all these three perspectives, I think if you really see from a business regulation perspective, that's the uh, major infra on which the financial ecosystem drives on. And I believe now with the global um, financial regulators talking to each other on a regular basis, we have seen that the regulations are emerging on line with the global best practices. And in most of the financial centers, now you go, you will find uh, a reasonable level of uh, uniformity in terms of operating, in terms of ease of doing business from those centers, and also the competitive tax regime that it provides for the institutions to operate. Uh, the IFFC at the Gift City is no exception. It provides an extraordinary infrastructure for the businesses to set up there, some of the finest uh, infrastructure which has been developed for the first time is already available at the International Financial Services Center in Gift City, India. Two, the business regulations have been benchmarked with the global best practices. And uh, the government of India very correctly set up the uh, unified regulator in the form of International Financial Services Center Authority, whereby the institutions are not required to go to the different agencies for the approvals. So under one umbrella, you have a unified regulator providing you the approvals for all the financial services to operate from. And third, in terms of the dispute resolution, it also provides a reasonable platform, uh, even uh, a neutral venues and uh, regulations of the Singapore International Arbitration are being offered from the International Financial Services Center in the IFFC zone. So I believe that the IFFC in India at Gift City is comparable to most of the global financial center in terms of its uh, regulation, in terms of its infrastructure, and in terms of the uh, tax regime that it provides. But to top on that, it provides a very, very competitive cost advantage to operate from. Fascinating. Thank you very much. And now we're going to move over to yourself, Prakesh. Now, Standard Chartered is a global bank with a presence in GIFT IFSC as well. How does GIFT IFSC compare with other jurisdictions? What problems do you think the GIFT IFSC is solving for the financial industry? Uh, hi. Yes, absolutely right. Standard Chartered was the first foreign bank to commence operations uh, last year. And this actually gave us an opportunity to expand our business across uh, trade financing, lending, uh, financial markets, and also other structured products. If you really look at the other international financial centers where Standard Chartered operates, there are a few key characteristics which stand out. One is the location. Uh, they have a strategic location uh, and also established an an in established and emerging economies. Uh, each of these locations have reputed exchanges, a good concentration of domestic and international banks, uh, trading as well as insurance companies. Uh, they have absolutely world-class infrastructure, uh, communication and commercial systems, and more importantly, is having a transparent and sound and legal regulatory environment, which is highly critical. When Standard Chartered was looking at all of this, we believe that Gift City is already in a position to offer all of these products, and more importantly, provide them on an internationally competitive reg regime as far as financial infrastructure is concerned. The, the best part of the whole thing was, as Dipesh mentioned, uh, a unified regulator, which was a combination of all the four regulators in India. And they, the, the regulator has actually adopted a very progressive approach and is aligning its objectives and regulations in line with the best of the international financial center. So being a new entity, they're actually adopting all the best practices which come in from all the financial centers to make it much more attractive, apart from obviously the financial incentives which have been given at Gift City, which is your long-term capital gains, worth holding tax exemption, as well as a 10-year tax holiday. So all of this put together actually makes IFSC, a fantastic destination for the international banks as well as the domestic banks to play a key part. And as you rightly mentioned, India is one of the largest growing economies. Uh, and how do you bring uh, India and the international economy together? And the entire financial system supporting this through the IFSC has been the key objective. And um, Prakash, on that, what opportunities are there for international and regional banks at the International Financial Services Centre? 
Um, so India has been, uh, if you look at the Indian corporates today, they are expanding internationally. So both imports and exports play a very significant role as far as Indian corporates are concerned. We've seen India, Indian corporates acquiring international uh, companies and vice versa, global MNCs playing a significant role in India. So if you really look at it, the current businesses of lending, trade finance, everything is already existing within uh, IFSC. And we have seen a significant amount of volume building up uh, across these two major products. Last year, uh, the introduction of the non-deliverable forwards uh, was a significant step taken by India to uh, get parity of the non-deliverable rupee along with the Indian rupee, which is getting currently traded in the offshore markets. The good thing is IFSC Authority um, has issued a lot of frameworks for new businesses, uh, which includes global in-house centers. If you look at it, India is a fairly large global in-house center for a lot of the international players. So a combination of front office and back office put together in India is a competitive advantage for the India uh, government itself. The asset management business today, investors looking into India and Indian investors looking abroad. That entire uh, spectrum has actually opened up within IFSC because one, the Indian government has allowed or IFSC has allowed the use of LRS, which is Indian money going offshore and also offshore money coming into India. So a two-way flow has been created and IFSC provides a phenomenal platform for this two-way flow to happen within, the, uh, within that center. As Dipesh also mentioned, the most critical thing was the International Arbitration Center, and hopefully with that kicking in, that provides a lot more comfort to both the international investors coming into India. And for Indian investors, it provides a platform which is closer to home, easy to monitor, and probably providing the same services at a much lower cost. Thank you, Prakash. Some great information in this session. Such a great deep dive on the subject. And we're going to come over to yourself, Depesh, for the next question. Uh, can you help us with a complete landscape of gift IFSC? How is the financial industry shaping up there, say, on banking, capital <coughs> markets, etc.? Yeah. Uh, so while the International Financial Centre got operational in April 2015 in India, the unified regulator got approved in December 2019. And on 1st October 2020, uh, it was vested with all the powers of the four regulators, which is the banking regulator, the central bank, the securities board, the insurance, and the pension regulators. All powers were vested on 1st, 1st October 2020. So if I tell you in my experience of last one year as to how the International Financial Services Center have grown uh, in terms of its size and business. Uh, it from 129 entities in September uh, 2020. Uh, in October 2021, it is uh, close to 250 plus entities, which is uh, more than 90 percent growth uh, in last one year uh, for a number of businesses uh, and the financial institutions to set up their base in the IFFC zone. Uh, we have seen, I think, one of the biggest segment uh, emerging clearly a winner for the IFFC has been the banking segment uh, with 20 plus banks, uh, including global banks like HSBC, Standard Chartered, Barclays, Citibank, JP Morgan, uh, Deutsche Bank. Uh, they're all setting up their base in the International Financial Services Center and all leading international uh, Indian uh, banks, both public and private sectors in all part of the ecosystem. Between them, they already crossed close to $125 billion transactions from the international zone, which is also very encouraging that they are dealing and structuring the international uh, deals right in the IFFC zone, which earlier they used to do it in from the global financial centers for India, and clearly giving them the advantage of uh, providing those services to both Indian and the foreign institutions from the IFFC zone. We are clearly seeing the capital market also emerging as a very important segment in the IFFC zone with two leading international exchanges operating and providing uh, 22 hours um, a day trading uh, for the global investors to participate 
is clearly a market which is growing very rapidly. So from $3 billion, uh, average daily volume, we have crossed now $15 billion in last one year from the capital market side. Uh, also on the listing of the debt uh, bonds uh, on uh, the international exchanges, we have crossed $45 billion now with some of the private listing, meaning the pr pr primary listing happening from the IFFC zone for some of the large institutions in India. And as uh, Prakash was just saying, we have been emerging as a very important alternate investment fund uh, platform for uh, global investors to participate into India. And in a way, this is now a, an example for people uh, to do a two-way transactions, one from India to overseas, they can use the IFFC platform. And from in overseas to India, they can use the international financial services platform. Uh, and I'm also happy to inform you that um, one of the largest globally now center uh, of Bank of America with around 2,000 people is also operating in the international financial services center now. Uh, cle clearly giving them an advantage of the cost and the infrastructure and the regulatory light touch regime, which offers, which is comparable to any global financial center. Mm. And Depesh, on those global investors from an op opportunity perspective, why should they develop a strategy for GIFT IFSC and how is GIFT uh, establishing its niche amongst other international financial centers? Yeah, I think uh, most importantly for GIFT, uh, there are two, three very important avenues that it touches. First, uh, uh, as you know, the India is a large uh, economy, so the hin hinterland uh, demand itself is a huge advantage that the International Financial Services Center is able to tap into. Uh, and two, as we have seen, a lot of financial centers globally uh, may not have large in terms of their own hinterland uh, demand. And that's where the IFFC at Cape City gets a uh, clear advantage of serving the large hinterland economy. Two, I think the um, strong Indian diaspora globally um, can be well connected through the International Financial Center here. Uh, so we are talking of 30 million plus strong diaspora, uh, Indian diaspora in the global uh, in the, in the global uh, countries um, uh, wanted to connect to India through the platform. And third, I think very importantly, it provides an opportunity for a, for India to its first time uh, provide a fully operational smart city with a best in class infrastructure and thereby giving a uh, clear advantage of global uh, experience uh, with the regulatory regime uh, very, very conducive to undertake the international financial services. So with this, I think we believe that the um, platform at the IFFC becomes very unique for both Indian and the global institutions to explore for their business in the international financial services are concerned. Very interesting. Thank you. And uh, if I could, Depeche, I'm going to stay with you, but ask you to answer this next question quite briefly because we're coming up to time. Can you throw a bit of light on the progress of the banking ecosystem in GIFT IFSC and why the financial industry will make the move into GIFT IFSC? I think this is a very important question, what we are asking you, as I said in my earlier um, uh, remarks, that the banking is clearly a, a one of the major success story that on which we uh, have a lot of pride for. Uh, we have 20 plus uh, uh, top, top class banks operating in the IFFC zone, and they already crossed $120 billion transaction. So what is the success story there? The success story is they are able to very efficiently solve the hinterland demand from the for the banking from the IFFC zone, which is a trade finance, the external commercial borrowing, ordinary related products being made available at your doorstep. And two, I think the um, the competitive tax regime, which the International Financial Services Center offers. Uh, is comparable uh, and thereby adding to the that advantage of operating from both a cost competitive and a tax competitive location at the IFFC in Gip City. And that's all we have time for. Depesha and Prakesh Subramanian, thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV.